Hi guys, welcome to another video. Which are the bags that I will never ever sell? There are bags in my collection and I have a few. I've got Hermes, I've got Chanel, I've got Louis Vuitton, I've got Dior, I've got Goyard, I've got quite a few bags. And you would think that they are all forever bags, but they're sort of not. And I'll explain why. Let's get going. So I looked through my luxury collection and I came up with seven bags that I feel are forever pieces that I will never ever let go of. Now, God forbid I ever have to, you know what I mean. I have so many other bags and these seven that I hope that I will never ever sell. I'll never get rid of, I'll never want to, but there are seven that I feel are true forever pieces and I will explain as we go along. And also I'm going to throw in a little bit of a wild card because there is an eighth bag that I know I will never ever get rid of <laughs> in the nicest possible way but I don't like it I don't use it it's not yeah it's not nice in my opinion at all I really don't love it so why on earth would I be keeping it wait for later to find out so I'm quickly trying to film a few videos this morning before I head off to the gym, which is my, yeah, it's my second home. And I just wanted a slight interlude <laughs> and then we'll get back onto the bags, I promise. But I just wanted to mention this because fitness is a massive part of my life and I've mentioned it in Q and A's and other videos. And this channel is not about fitness. It's about bags, <laughs> nice things, luxury goods. But it is a massive part of my life and I just wanted to mention this to you. This is a gorgeous, just look, it's a beautiful piece of jewellery but it's actually a ring that is like a smart ring and this is from Ultra Human. So this video is not sponsored but they did kindly send this to me because they wanted me to like, I don't know, just test it out and see my thoughts on it. So I have been testing this out only in the last day or so. So I'm going to just mention it in very very quickly now and then I'm going to come back to it in a few days or however long once I've got used to it and once I see what it actually does so I just thought some of you guys might be interested in this because I know a lot of you guys are into your fitness well-being and you don't have to be a fitness fanatic to want to look after your health and just have a bit more information I went for silver because I wanted it to go with my uh, white gold um, eternity ring and I just think it looks really cool. I like the fact it's chunky because I'm not a dainty girl. I am not dainty in any way. So yeah, it's very comfortable and it measures so many things. I can't even explain all the things it measures, your steps, your resting heart rate. I'll put some uh, cutaways so you can see it links to an app. It measures your sleep and your recovery. It measures your fitness levels, the VO2. I don't even understand half of it and I need to look into it properly. But I am one of those people that want to see how many steps I've done. But I don't really want to wear an Apple Watch or a, I don't know. I don't like really wearing a watch that often. I've in it the last two nights and it's very, very comfortable. You don't even notice, to be fair. So yeah, anyway, I thought I'd just mention it. I'll put all the links below in case you guys are looking at this because this is from a company called Ultra Human and I've watched quite a few YouTube videos. If you're anything like me and you love that bit of research or you love the analytics, this is gonna be amazing because there is so much information that this ring actually tells you about your body. So I am all over this. Um, I'm loving looking at the graphs and the statistics, but even if you just want it to measure very simple things like the steps and, and all the rest of it and a general health thing, it's, fa it's fabulous. But yeah, I've done a lot of research and this has come out on top of a lot, on a lot of different um, comparison videos which I find quite interesting so I'm very thrilled to be able to test this out so thank you to Ultra Human I will be checking back in anyway back to the bags so I'm going to start off with two bags that I think are, will be no surprise to any of you as being my forever bags and this is the first one <laughs> this is the bag that I have called my in effect the favorite bag in my collection as in the bag that if everything else had to go, I would not want to let this go. 
if I could only have one bag, I think it would be this one. And that's very, very, very hard to say. But because I have some beautiful, beautiful things and I am very blessed. But I think this is such a good all rounder. This is the Birkin 30. It's in Clemence leather, which is a beautiful leather. It's got that slight slouch, but yeah, mine has held up really, really well. This is in the colour blue onk, which is a gorgeous dark blue, but it does have an indigo sort of hue to it it's it's absolutely beautiful mine's in gold hardware it's just an all-rounder and it is a forever piece it was also my first ever Birkin not my first ever Hermes bag we'll come on to that but my first ever Birkin and it it just holds a lot of sentimental value but it's also just a great bag and I love it I absolutely love it so that is absolutely in my top seven of <laughs> bags that I will not ever be letting go okay the second one i'm sure this will be no surprise either is this one i've raved about this bag ever since i picked it up and this was my my four thousand was this my four no it was my three thousand subscriber unboxing and yeah it's very 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 special to me it is just honestly it never comes across on screen i'm just looking at my um my monitor it never comes across on film or on camera like it does in real life. It throws so many colours. I don't know, the lights just don't do it justice. But honestly, take it from me, this is a very, very special piece. And I cannot imagine ever, ever wanting this to go anywhere. So yeah, I've called the Birkin my favourite ever bag in my collection. And I think this is the most special bag in my collection just so I can sort of give them both a little bit of an honour. So those are the first two. So next on my list I have to include this one. This is my absolute pride and joy. This is the Kelly 28 in the Ritorne style in Togo leather, Greet Etan and it's got palladium hardware and this was the one. Ten years ago or however long ago, if you'd have asked me what is your number one bag, money no object, availability no object, you can choose the number one bag of your dreams. It was this, in this exact combination. And the fact that I managed to get this direct from store was just an absolute dream. So because this was so sentimental to me, it was at a time where oh, I, I just attached things, and I know they're just things, but they do bring sentiment and they bring memories and evoke emotion in me. Call it silly, whatever, this is what this does. So, so I was so, so lucky to be able to add this to my collection. I just, honestly, absolute dream. So this would be going absolute nowhere. I just want to clarify in this as well. I have mentioned a few times that I got this bag without any purchase history and I've been pulled up on that a few times in the comments. And I just want to say that I, yes, I'd bought some earrings. Yes, my husband had bought a belt. I was buying a belt when we had our first conversation with regard to this. But what I meant by no purchase history is, purchase history is classed, classed <laughs> by people out there as pre-spend, as spending a lot of money, having a huge purchase history that's, oh, that goes towards being potentially being offered a bag. So if this bag was... £10,000, which is not actually far off that now. Hermes would be allegedly asking you or the person would deem to think they have to spend £10,000 on other things in order to be offered the chance of a bag. So you'd have to buy fine jewellery or homeware or other things. Now, what I was alluding to is I didn't do that. I didn't buy anything of any significance. And the earrings I bought, I bought in a completely different store. And my husband was just buying the belt as we were talking. So it wasn't purchase history. They would look at my uh, profile and I am literally a nobody. We're all nobodies, aren't we? <laughs> we're all somebodies, but you know what I mean. So I just wanted to clarify what I meant by no purchase history anyway this is going nowhere it's my first ever Hermes bag my first ever Kelly and it's I love it I just love it it's a beautiful bag this combination was the thing for me this beautiful cool tone this grey tan is the perfect grey in my humble opinion 
And I am very, very um, experienced, shall we say, in neutrals. So I think this is the best. OK, we have to bring this one in. This one is as beautiful as my other one. Let's just grab it. They are so beautiful, both of them. They are very different, but also very, very similar. This is my first um, mini Capucines. This is in the purple colour. It was called Amethyst and it's in the ostrich leather. So it is another exotic. And the colour of this is insanely beautiful. As soon as I saw this, there's a whole story on how I bought this. So yeah, go and have a look at that video. But it's very, very special to me. I I don't think these compete with each other. I still love both of them. This is super special just because of the finish and, oh, and everything else. But this was my... 3,000 subscriber unboxing and this was my 1,000 subscriber unboxing so I have attached the memory of these to those little milestones so this is just oh another absolute forever piece I love this and by the way both of these are reasonably durable yeah I think I think that they are okay my next forever piece has to be this one this bag is insane it is absolutely it's the color the combination everything about it is just beautiful it is the birkin 25 and it is in rouge granat in togo leather again with gold hardware and oh, i don't even need to explain this one do i just look at it it's a, it's quite a neutral for me is this red it is beautiful I just have no words for it. The Birkin 25, it's so light, it fits loads. It's just, oh, it's just the best. I wish the handles were slightly bigger just so you could get your arm in a little bit easier. But other than that, it's just the best. And I oh, love it, love it, love it. This is very, very, very special. It's going nowhere. Okay, we have to bring in a little bit more Louis Vuitton, don't we? This is a forever piece for me. I held out so long on the Petite Mal because I thought it was so expensive, which it is, for such a small bag, which it is, for something that you can't fit much in, which it is. But I absolutely love it. And what had happened was I had never properly got my hands on one. I had seen them online. I'd seen them maybe on a shelf in a store. I'd never properly looked at them. I just had seen them and thought, oh, they're really cool. But I would never pay that for a little box bag that you literally can't use. And it's just a novelty. It's, yeah, it's a statement piece. It's a collector's piece. Oh, but yeah. As soon as I got my hands on it, it was coming home with me. And I got this in Paris when I went there with my with my husband. And, oh my goodness, as soon as I got my hands on it, I was, I was sold, sold, sold. And it had to be this one. It had to be this combination. It had to be the Louis Vuitton monogram, which is my favourite of the canvases. It had to be black trim. It had to be... Oh, just this exact one. This is the one that, uh, yeah, it's got the little red kisses on it. I love this so much. And I've used this so much more than I could ever have imagined. It is a little, not a TARDIS because you really can't fit much in it, but you can fit enough in it. And it's indestructible, it literally. So on those times where you're going somewhere and you yeah you're just a little bit wary of taking a certain bag in case it gets damaged or you have to put it down somewhere or maybe you're going somewhere and there's I don't know some bad weather and you're worried about that this is pretty indestructible it's oh it's wonderful and it's just the history isn't it going back to the history of of Louis Vuitton with the hard-sided um, luggage the trunks the just the craftsmanship oh I will be adding more petite mouths. As soon as I saw Dale's, both her petite mouths, honest to goodness, Dale, I'm coming for both of those. I am coming for both of those. I just love them. So yeah, I think I will look into more petite mouths in the future. Maybe, maybe I'll look at exotics because they do some amazing ones. And Meredith, 
oh my goodness your blue lizard oh petite mal is i think it is the nicest the nicest petite mal i've ever seen for sure is it the nicest bag that i've ever seen in general it's definitely up there I love it. And Amelia, I do have to also bring you in here because you are the actual reason that I bought this. Because before that, I just looked from afar and thought, no, I'm not sure. And then I saw you rocking this in person and on your gorgeous channel. And I was, do you know what? Maybe next time I'm in Louis Vuitton, I'll have a look. And when we're in Paris, I did. And that was it. So actually, this is your fault, Amelia. But it's a good one. So thank you, my love. Okay, we're nearly there, guys. This is another forever piece. This is my Chanel Jumbo Classic Flap in black caviar with silver hardware. This, again, was the dream. This was the dream Chanel bag. Oh, I wanted this for so many years and I could not afford it. And every time I got to the point where I could sort of look at it, the price had gone up again and it kept going up and up and up and it's gone up and up and up and up since I bought this. So I bit the bullet and I can't remember, I'd have to look back when it was, but it's quite a few years ago now. And this was 4,500 in the region of that. It might have been four 450 or something. And that was such a lot of money. It is such a lot of money. But now these are double that. So I am very pleased <laughs> that I got this when I did. Is it my favourite bag in my collection? No. Do I wear it a lot? No. Do I love it? Yes. <laughs> Do I love wearing it when I wear it? Yes. I don't really love shoulder bags. And I think I, I think you can see from my forever bags <laughs> here, I like a top handle. And if it's got both, then it's like the mini capucines. If it's got both a top handle and a crossbody, then I think it's pretty much, yeah, a great bag for me. But the fact that this is just a shoulder bag is, yeah, because it's too big and bulky and too long actually on the strap to go crossbody, but on the shoulder it's perfect. But there's something about this style that, yeah, I forgive it, the fact that it doesn't have a top handle. So... It's very, very sentimental to me. Most of these things are sentimental and this is why they're forever pieces. This attaches to, I suppose, a reward and a just a milestone in my professional career, if you like, a little bit of a getting to a point where I could, yeah, afford something like this from working hard all those years. So it's very, very sentimental. I love it. It's going nowhere. I'll never, ever, ever, ever sell it. And there we go. We are down to the last one. And here is the wild card. <laughs> it's this one. I don't like this bag. This is the Louis Vuitton Montessori. Is it Montessori's backpack? This was, I think it was the PM size. I don't like backpacks. I've never liked backpacks. I've never bought another backpack other than for going hiking. I do have a, like a North Face one or something for going hiking because that's what they're for for me. They are not for luxury goods. They're just not for me. I don't love them. So why on earth have I kept this all this time? And why on earth would I never sell it? Well, I have a whole video based on sentimental things and yeah, you should really watch that for the full story. But yeah, suffice to say that my husband surprised me with this and this is my first ever Louis Vuitton bag and it's from 20 odd years ago and I could not believe that he had gone all the way to London and got me this bag and then I opened the box and it was a backpack and I was so disappointed, <laughs> I can't tell you and I, I've said this in so many videos, I am such a bad person and I never told him that I didn't like it because how could I? He was so kind and I couldn't believe I had a Louis Vuitton bag. And I've used it, you can see it's absolutely gone. <laughs> I've used it because why wouldn't I? But yeah, I don't like it. I've never liked it. I, yeah, I haven't enjoyed using it. <laughs> and my husband only found out when I started YouTube and I mentioned it in a video that, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't love it and I sort of gave him the heads up and he watched the video and yeah, we giggle about it now, but yeah don't love it i'll never ever get rid of it too sentimental oh just yeah the thought that went into this is everything it's just everything anyway thank you so much for watching if you want any information on the ultra human air ring please please have a look and i will keep you all updated let me know if you're interested in knowing what this does anyway thank you so much for watching i'll see you on another one